Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, let's talk about the Max Axe. So what exactly is the Max? Well, the Max Axe is actually not just an axe, it's a system. And it's made in the United States, made in the USA, and it is considered to be seven tools in one. And of course, it is an axe, it also is a shovel, a pick, both a small pick and a broad pick. It's a rake, a hoe, and a mattock. And so it has a lot of great uses. If you do any kind of four-wheeling or four-by-four four off-road kind of outside activities, you need one of these Max Axes. Uh, the particular model that I have was made for the U.S. military and it is uh, all olive drab. They do make them in other colors, but of course everything in the military is green uh, for those purposes. And we're designed for Humvees and it's a, considered a vehicle rescue tool. In other words, if you get stuck or there's a tree across the road or you just need to clear a place to park your, your Hummer or whatever vehicle you had to be driving, that's what this was designed for. And so it's a pretty unique tool. The specifications of the Max Axe are that it's, of course, I said before, made in the USA, uh, of the finest tempered tool steel. It is a three and a half pound axe head in the Hudson Bay style. And it comes with the leather axe sheath. It also weighs 12 and a half pounds. So this is not something that you're just gonna take backpacking or use bushcrafting. It really is for your vehicle. Uh, it does come with all of the tools in a very compact storage case. Here's the storage case. Of course, this is the axe, and because it is still currently made, you can get replacement parts for it, whatever you need uh, to go with this. Now, it is a bit of an expensive tool. Uh, when you pick this up, though, you're going to know why. It is really made of very high quality steel, and the handle itself is a, a fiberglass type handle. Uh, it's very lightweight compared to a lot of other uh, axes and of course if you consider the weight of all the tools combined if you were to have each separate tool then obviously it would weigh a whole lot more. So 12 and a half pounds for all that you get with this particular tool is a pretty good deal and it doesn't weigh a whole lot. However, the price is it retails at $249.95 so it's $250 US so that's kind of pricey but I have seen them on the secondary market for as little as $75 so and uh, with all of the parts and pieces that I just showed you so if you keep your eyes open and you look around at surplus shops yard sales flea markets uh, things like we have that here in the United States you can find these axes even with all the parts for a fairly reasonable price here is a picture of the pamphlet that comes with it and of course you can see it says Max Military Multi-Purpose Tool and it has all different configurations of how you're supposed to use it and put it together. So let's show that to you right now. Of course, first of all, and you've got the little sticker here. It's starting to come off. Uh, I bought this used, of course, and in new condition, but it's new old stock. But it's got a really nice leather sheath on it, fastened with the buckle. It comes off quite easily. It's very heavy duty leather. It's really well made. And of course, the Hudson Bay style head. As I said in my previous axe video, it has this square hole, which is tapered. It's large at this side and small on this side. And the idea is, is for fastening the attachments. And so it, it's super sharp. I mean, it holds an amazing edge. And I have used this to chop and split wood just to, just to try it out. And uh, believe me, this is a great tool. And so we'll put this back on here. And uh, you can see for the top that it is fiberglassed in. So this is the bag that all the tools come in. Nice carrying handle. And this is the straps in the back here where the ax handle slides through so you can carry it all as one unit. It has a Velcro closure. And inside we have all of the various tools and uh, that come with it. So the very first tool that I want to show you is the shovel. And of course you can see but it's a pretty good size shovel. I mean, it's not like a little tiny, you know, folding shovel. It's fairly thick steel. It's got a nice sharp point on it. And inside, if you will look here, you can see these pins. These are like cotter pins. And there's on both sides, so some here and some over there. And these pins, there's quite a few of them, 
so that you can replace them. And they are for fastening the shovel onto the axe head. So you take the max here and it's got a that attachment, that pin, and it slides like this, it's tapered, and then it's designed so you take this pin and slide it in here. Just like that. Now it's on there. And uh, of course it looks a little weird and you always want to make sure that you keep the the cover on this. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty good size shovel. So if you want to dig with it, you can see there's some uh, dirt here on it. I have used this one. I carry this in my truck from time to time. And so this particular shovel implement has come in handy. And uh, I highly recommend, of course, having a shovel in your truck. And this kind of covers a lot of bases. The next tool is the small pick. It's a very fine point on it. It's a very heavy duty piece of steel. And again, the same type of fastener. Just put it in and you slide the cotter pin in. And there you go. Now we have our pick and we can dig into hard soil. Next we have the broad pick. You can see the size comparison here with the small pointy pick as opposed to the broad pick. And the broad pick goes on, like all the other tools, not to be redundant. And there you have it. The next tool is the mattock attachment and it is sharpened, sort of a chisel sharpened there and fastening it on just like all the others. And so now we have our Maddox, and we could use this for a very hard pan, hard dirt hoe if we wished, if you really have some serious grubbing in the dirt to do, and uh, this really will, will help you get through that. And uh, so you can see how wide it is compared to my hand. It's pretty good size. The next attachment is double-sided. It is both a rake and a broad hoe. So you can fasten it on whichever way you wish. And this one has a unique fastener. So because of the shape and design of this, if you notice it's a flat plate and there's nowhere to install the cotter pin. So what you use for this is this attachment, which has a couple of divots here you can see in the top and this set screw and you would slide it in until it's flush, tighten it down, and there you have a really nice heavy duty rake that you can use if you would need to rake something up. You know, a lot of times after you split wood, if you're building shelter, dragging leaves or debris, this would be a really handy device to have. Flipping it around, again we just use the other side and turning it that way and as it's made it fits right here right between the the axe head fits right between the rake so you don't have to even ever take this cover off and we just do the very same thing this does have a bit of a chisel grind on it as you can see it's not really sharp it's designed for hoeing but uh, now we have a nice broad hoe in case we need to plant something or dig deep or enlarge a trench drag some dirt out. So, you all have seen axes before. I've demonstrated uh, chopping with one and uh, different axes in my axe video, my favorite bushcraft axe. But uh, this is a really great axe. Uh, this head really doesn't bother you much. Uh, you generally don't have any issues at the top anyway because the side profile, you know, is what counts. And of course, one tool that they did not list that uh, really makes it an eighth tool is, uh, of course, you can use this for a hammer. And if you need to drive tent stakes or pound wedges, uh, this would actually work pretty well for that too. So even though that's not on the list of tools that they say it uh, is designed for, uh, as long as you're not pounding steel, uh, of course, if you don't know this, uh, you should know that you're never supposed to hit steel, uh, especially the back of an axe head. Uh, you're never supposed to drive steel wedges. Uh, I'm talking about driving wedges. I mean, of course, driving wooden wedges uh, to split logs and things like that. 
But uh, anyway, so another use for this remarkable axe. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. Please like, share, and subscribe. And make sure and press that bell button to stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.